Welcome back. So when we last left off, the guys were sort of in the process of putting together this uh, fixture for holding the four plane when it gets constructed. And here Zach is just um, prepping the steel there for the side rails and that so it can be welded up. And if you also recall last time the guys were doing the layup to close out the inside skin of the door after the core was put in place. And this is what it looks like now that the peel ply has been re removed and it just needs to have a little bit of cleanup work around the edges. And after the guys finished bonding those uh, little stands to the bottom of these two molds, um, we flipped them over and uh, had them on the machine there and just used the machine to level them all off. It was quicker than trying to do it by hand or do it by eye. So those two molds are ready now. And as you can see, uh, uh, Jeff and Devin are cutting the core for those. And here's Jeremy uh, drilling the holes in these uh, side um, braces to mount the bits of um, carbon there that are going to be milled. And this is for that um, fixture to hold the four plane. And there's Jim bolting um, the pieces of carbon on so it's ready to go up on the machine for milling. And I guess I didn't get any video of Jim welding all those bits up. But anyway, here it is um, all together. And the uh, machine uh, starting out milling the shape um, of the upper skin of the four plane on that first rib. And uh, here's that door skin again now, or door, and then uh, Keith's gone and cleaned off all around the edges there, just smoothed off all the transitions. And now back on the machine again, a little bit further along there, actually slid it down the table and uh, just on the last set now. Now moving over to the other door, now that the window was bonded in, it was time to uh, get things ready to bond the actual skin on, and here um, Jim and Jeremy were putting in these little sort of fences there for later on if we need them. And there's the other door now with getting the hardware put back in place. Uh, slowly moving along, just making sure that that's all working. And uh, actually it's working pretty nice in terms of the whole over center mechanism and all that stuff. And so there um, you can see Jeff and uh, Devin got the core cut and there's a couple of FR4 hard points in there for where those get bolted on. Uh, for where the four plane gets bolted into the fuselage. So those uh, two molds are all now prepped and he's got, got everything marked out. And last time you may remember that uh, Jim was uh, wiring up uh, or laying out the um, the cabling and stuff for the aileron controls and this is looking in the fuselage in here in the keel. And as you can see here if you look carefully and just sort of freeze frame it here in a second. Um, the alignment isn't right from the pulleys on the floor to the one that is attached to the center stick there and because of it it's sort of grinding on the pulley and as you can see um let's see if, see if i can freeze frame it for you right there there you go so um as you can see there the alignment isn't right that cable should have been coming straight towards the camera and if we hold this uh ruler here uh, flat up against the wheel you can see we're out by about a half inch. So needless to say, the fix for that was to um, come and put um, a spacer in between the back end of the, the pulley thing and the actual pulley itself. And this is what it looks like after the fix. So it actually came out perfectly. Just put a half inch spacer in there. There you can see the spacer blocks there. Um, some FR4 ones and also a steel spacer in the middle. And uh, that fixed that problem. So that's all aligned now and uh, cables have been tensioned and everything like that. Um, so it's all uh, set up and working nicely now. And I'll show you a bit more of that here uh, in a minute. But anyway, that, that's um, how things are with the prototype. We marked and measured where we were um, bonding those wheels on the floor into place and the pulleys and when they were out by half an inch. So anyway, I'm not sure how that happened, but it did. And looking behind the pressure bulkhead there, you can see one of the turnbuckles there uh, going up. So this is what Jim had been working on. And there's the other one. So a left and right one, and you see all the pulleys there. And then there's a turnbuckle for the cable that comes back across because uh, the cables sort of go up and out to the outboard um, edges of the spar there and then back across the middle. So it's like a continuous loop. Um, anyway, so that's all sorted out now. So that's another thing down. There's not hardly anything to happen there behind that um, rear bulkhead anymore. I think pretty much everything's sorted out now. There's a center stick there. And also uh, you can see he's um, got the cabling in here or the hoses lines in there for the um, the dump valve for the gear if you ever have to dump the gear. And that'll be mounted uh, in the console itself. 
And here's Jeff getting underway um, and Devon uh, laying up the first of these spars for the foreplane. So this is the leading edge spar and it's the narrower, smaller one of the two. And it, not too many plies in this, just a couple of plies and then uh, some core and some more plies. And uh, here's uh, Jeremy and Keith and they're uh, working on putting in the little handle for the inside thing for the door. See more on that in a minute. And here's that uh, fixture all done now. Um, off the machine, or still sitting on the machine, but basically all done. You can see the cutouts there for where the spars sit in. Those are the spars that Jeff and Devin are laying up. And then on the outboard edge is where the skins actually sit. So um, that one's done now. And this is the next day, so uh, Jeff and Devin, it looks like they're doing the same thing, but basically <laughs> you can see the cores in there now, and that had been bagged down. And so then now they're closing it out. Yeah, I don't have any and uh, here's the fuselage now with the other door um, put on. And just with the skin sort of clicked into place there on that door. So I was working on this one and getting it to fit nicely. And uh, my little jigging worked out really nicely. That window fits in there like a glove. <laughs> nice spacing on both sides. So it's going to look awesome uh, once it's all cleaned off and all that plastic and stuff is off. So excited about that. And here's Zach uh, working on the intake tray um, and fitting it around all the different stuff, the turbos and everything around the engine because that's kind of how it has to all live there. Um, anyway, he's making good progress on that. And this is what that spa looks like um, after it had been finished and bagged and, and, uh, and then the bag removed. So that one just needs to be popped out now and trimmed off. And next week the guys will be on to the other one. And here's Devin uh, mixing up some high sole so we can bond the skin onto that door. So not wasting any time. Uh, got that all prepped up and um, Jeremy helped me with getting the high sole laid out on all the flanges there and uh, I was sort of spreading around he was just sort of dropping it on there where it needed to be and um, I ended up spreading it out and then we uh, clicked the whole thing into place and put a few clamps on it and uh, got it all done and this is what it looked like on the end of day on Friday so a bunch of clicks in the middle a few weights there on the edge there where it meets the glass just to make it sort of sit down nicely and some clamps around the outside so that one will be ready to go back on uh, the uh, aircraft there on Monday and actually no we're going to still put the core on the inside of that one close it out like we did the other one and that's what this one looks like so uh, Keith made a handle there for the inside of the door it's kind of just a temporary one but it's going to do the trick you'll see more of that later on next week and I had a chance to run the engine too, and uh, this time I had actually changed the prop pitch, made it a little bit, a um, little bit heavier pitch, put a little bit more load on the engine, and wanted to see what sort of uh, temps we got here. So, as you can see, I've set up my um, infrared camera again, and I've got it targeted there on the Y pipe, and I wanted to see what sort of temperatures are coming out of the cylinders there and going into the turbo, and compare those with what I'm reading coming out of the turbo. So this is when the engine's just sort of just fired it up and it's just starting to warm up. And uh, then and you'll see this time lapse here. So the only thing I changed on this run was just putting a little bit more pitch on the prop and I was going to run it up a little bit harder, um, put a little bit more fuel in there and just see where the temps got to. Um, obviously not trying to damage the engine or anything like that and I'll ask you guys in a little bit for some uh, feedback on what you think different temperatures should be but uh, again this is just while it's warming up right now so you can see and I was repositioning uh, the target on the camera there to try and get it right on um, the hottest spot there because you know I had the camera mounted on my tripod there just next to the engine and I didn't want to get it sucked into the engine because I you know anchored the tripod there um, anyway, you'll see it here shortly it ramp up fairly quickly when I make the power run um, up to sort of full power and uh, Then you can, you can see where we get to but it doesn't get that hot it gets up to I think 450 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of there but What's interesting is you'll see that the exhaust gas temperature coming out of the turbo is like 1400 degrees so it's literally going up, you know a thousand almost a thousand degrees more um, coming out of the turbo which is insane but anyway have a here we go this is where it, we're doing the power run now so it's going up fairly quickly and again this is still sped up but it wasn't going up that fast this is 16 times or eight times normal speed I think it is eight times so there that was the power on there now it's now I'm backing it back off again um, 
so you get the feel of what happened there and I'll show you here in a second uh, the results of that run so we got to 450 degrees there in the Y pipe now I haven't had a chance to install any other temp sensors yet because um, Brit's away on vacation so I won't be able to do that until after Oshkosh um, so anyway I was just relying on that uh, the infrared for the um, temperatures there so anyway here's the run and there's the warm-up and then here's the section when we do the the power run here so I'll just sort of zoom in on this and you can see kind of what was going on there so I as you can see I stepped it up um, you know fairly quickly up to the max power level so there's all the different steps where I was changing the throttle setting just generally by five five units every time all the way up to a hundred percent so for example you can see at this point there I had 75% uh, throttle setting and the fuel flow was 11.4 gallons an hour and getting about 3400 rpm and then at this setting here we're 80% um, throttled, 12.7 uh, gallons an hour and still in 3400 rpm and stepping up there 85% throttle, um, 3500 rpm, 14.9 gallons an hour so just stepping along there, so now 90% throttle, 16.3 gallons an hour and there's the fuel mass that's being delivered at the bottom there and then 95% 16.6 .6 gallons an hour and basically hit the fuel mass of 100 which is basically the limit that I've got set right now so I need to adjust that because at, at, at this point it's not going to give it any more fuel until you know I change that so that's something I actually have to go and do now for the next run um, but what's interesting to see is that um, you know it didn't add any more fuel or have any more fuel flow from the last run even though I took it up and gave it more fuel mass and it prob probably has something to do with the low, but there's the temperature there, that's the EGT um, and you can see, you know, we went over 1500 there and that's the temperature coming directly out of turbo number one is the red one and the yellow one is um, coming out of turbo number two so much, much hotter than the air um, or the exhaust there going into the turbo and um, I'm still trying to figure out, and, and then you can see the maximum boost we hit was uh, 46 pounds total um, so boosting there over 14 which is you know ambient so uh, 32 pounds of boost altogether so anyway if you, if you guys want to chime in and uh, let me know what you think um, first of all what you think the best or the highest temperature we want to be hitting coming out of the uh, exhaust is and then what the highest temperature we want to have coming out of the turbo is um, that would be really helpful to have some input on that but uh, anyway that's our update for this week and uh, thanks again for watching